I'm Sean Bose, concert visual designer in Los Angeles, California. Today, we're talking to Sandy Meidinger, aka Neon Tropical on the Instagram. She is a visual artist and VJ based in San Diego. You've seen her work on club stages and major festivals around the world. And she spent the last few years touring with Elenium. You can catch them on tour this summer. Without further ado, Sandy, welcome to the show. Thanks for being here. Thanks for having me. It was a great intro. Oh, thank you. I try. <laughs> uh, so I like to start these off kind of the same way uh, with the origin story. Can you tell us a little bit about like, where'd you grow up? What were you into as like a kid or teenager or whatever? And uh, how did that kind of lead you into this world? Uh, I grew up in, in the valley near Pasadena in a little town called La Crescenta. Um, and when I turned, or in, when I was a kid, I just, I was into, interested in art. I like to draw and paint and do all that. And then, so I decided to go to college for graphic design at San Diego State. And I was in my, um, my last year there when I went to a rave the same, the first weekend of school. And I had just taken an After Effects class. And I remember looking up at the visuals and I, it just clicked for me in that moment. And I just knew that was the best way that I could combine my love for music and art into one thing. But this was back in 2012. So everything was completely different than in how it was now. Um, there was not many people to talk to there. It was so hard to find information about what to do, but I met a couple of VJs in the industry at the time and they just kind of guided me and just through there met more people and it just grew and grew. Awesome. Yeah. I think uh, so many of our stories kind of start with, you know, going to graphic design school. Cause like, mm -hmm. it seems like the most creative way to get a paycheck, but you know, you're mm -hmm. like, I guess I'll make, I don't know, ads or like mm -hmm. posters or something. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and then you go to a show and you're like, wait a minute. Yeah. I know how to make that. Hell yeah. This sounds way more fun. Do you remember what, uh, what show that was or what um, you were watching? So it's, it's a little festival called tramps like us at the sports arena. And I remember it was fat boy slim was playing. Um, and the VJ was actually my good friend now, Miguel accent creative, who's just an awesome person. He helped me so much in the beginning. And so it was awesome to see his visuals and those be the ones that made it click for me. And then to eventually work with him and become friends with him and learn from him. Um, so yeah, it was a really cool moment. Hell yeah. That's awesome. And, uh, so you said it was, it was kind of hard to find, information about this stuff back then i think it, yeah. it still is to a degree but definitely back then I, we're i think we're around the same age i was finishing up school around that time too uh and so but you said you like met a couple of vjs and kind of mm -hmm. started finding out about it that way uh how did you find those people how did you get in touch with them uh and how did you find what little information there was out there I, the first VJ I talked to, his name was Morgan from Melt Creative. I think I talked to him on social media, Instagram or Facebook or something. And he was coming to San Diego for a show. And then, so we met up and he gave me a list, you know, you need to buy a Resolume, you need to buy a projector, you know, and just do it. Um, and then Miguel, I met him, Miguel and Tanner, I met in San Diego, just the San Diego community of VJs. Um, and those were like, the people that really, really helped me in the beginning, just, you know, I owe so much to them. Hell yeah. Yeah. Those are, uh, it's a solid list of names to have mm -hmm. as like early homies and mentors in the, in the space. Um, it was a small community. There was not it, that many people and a lot of people knew each other. V squared labs was really big at the time. And I, you know, a few years I got to work with them and Velo and Andy. So it was, yeah, it was, it was different back then than it is now smaller yeah hell yeah well we could talk to talk about that a little bit um i'm curious when did you when did you start uh like performing or, or did you start performing first or making content first what was your sort of in into the um, like the first gigs 
kind of both. I remember my first, the first time I ever played for anyone was, it was a Beyond Wonderland after party at this hotel. And the promoter had hired, already hired and was paying a different BJ. But he said, oh, you could just set up your projector in the corner and just do whatever you want. So what I had done is I cut up the Disney version of Alice in Wonderland into all these little clips. And I got some other like 3D looking videos and mix the two and so I just set up my projector on the back corner of the wall and by the end of the night I just had a whole group of people just sitting in front of my projector watching and nobody was paying attention to the stage and it was just wow. yeah <laughs> that was the first time I ever played for anyone that's pretty awesome that's uh yeah that's really cool that's a an interesting way to get into it it's kind of like you're like yeah you could just show up and like you know yeah do a little something do whatever uh yeah maybe we will give you a couple drink tickets or something i don't know mm -hmm. and exactly uh, but you end up drawing a bigger crowd than the actual stage uh, yeah. r.i.p that or the actual vj for that party yeah <laughs> <laughs> uh very cool um so then like what what happened after that how did uh how did that lead into you know, hooking um, up with V squared or getting uh, more regular yeah. gigs. It was, I mean, there was a, a long time where I didn't really get to do anything. I had a, a random things like Miguel got me on a show where I played on led for the first time, a very, very small show. Um, and with V squared, my, my friend whoop whoopie, I don't know how I met whoopie, but um, he was working with V squared and at, also at the nightclub called create nightclub right now it's called academy but it used to be called it create in hollywood and he was going to do some other festival and they needed a vj and everyone's busy so i got to go up there and i just tried my hardest and everyone everyone enjoyed working with me so i eventually became the backup vj for whenever whoopi was gone i would drive up um, on the weekends from San Diego on Friday after my graphic design job, I'd sit through traffic to get there Friday night. Uh, luckily my dad was still living in LA at the time. So I could just stay at his house and then work two nights and drive back down Sunday, go back to work. Um, so I did that for a long time. Then I became the resident there. And every weekend I was just driving back and forth San Diego to LA, um, and that was when I really, really got to learn Resolume, how to VJ, learned all of my content, what works, what doesn't work, color matching, brightness, working with an LD, you know, the, all of those nights in the club just really, really got me to where I am today, I think. Hell yeah. Yeah. Um, so that that's awesome. So you had a, uh, like a graphic design job for a while mm -hmm. and we're just like yeah. moonlighting this on the weekends and mm -hmm. whenever uh uh yeah that's another common in that i've been hearing as i do a few more of these and it's how i got into one of my first gigs as well it's like the main guy was uh like couldn't make it that day had another gig mm -hmm. got sick yep. something like that and you just jump at the opportunity and kick yep. ass uh yeah what were some and of the yeah they're okay nice i was to gonna people. ask what are some of the things you think you did on that first gig that really like helped you stand out and get called back again i i really believe being a nice person and being easy to work with and being flexible can get you a lot of places just by doing that um but yeah i mean i'm sure my vj style was up to par a little bit you know if if they wanted to call me back um, but I, I think it was just more being um, becoming part of the team and getting to know people and people getting along with others, I think was a really big part of it. Nice. Hell yeah. And uh, all right. So you ended up kind of working your way up within uh, mm -hmm. Create Now yeah. Academy uh, and ended up being the resident BJ there for a while, got mm -hmm. your chops. What were some of the, what are some of the lessons that you learned there as far as like performance wise um, that um, uh, really like honed your skills? Are there any things you can think of that you really learned there? Uh, oh yeah. De I'm, the LD that I work with, he was very particular. Um, he 
color matching, brightness, always yelling at me to turn it down, turn down my brightness, change it to this color. Like I had to follow his colors. I couldn't choose the colors, things like that. Where like, and I never realized until I got to bigger places, how important that was to learn how to work with an LD and get along with your LD and not like jumbling everything on top of each other. And I think, yeah, that was the number one thing that I learned. And I'm so thankful to learn because I think that has helped my show design so much. Do you have, so uh, we'll talk uh, pretty soon about some of the differences between like different types of performances that you've done. Uh, Mm -hmm. But in a club environment like that, um, you know, you're kind of, it's very improvisational and, you know, Mm -hmm. you're following Mm -hmm. the LD, whatever they feel like doing. Uh, Mm -hmm. Apparently this guy ran a tight ship and you needed Mm -hmm. to follow his colors. Do you have any like workflow tips or anything that, uh, that really help you do that on the fly quickly and uh, kind of read people's mind and respond fast? Definitely having two different types of clips, having like a buildup and a slower moving one, and then having something for the drop and just com- making looks with multiple videos that are in the same look that have both of those. Because I think once you know your content and you you hear the song, it's a slow beat, it's, you know, mo- getting building, building, and then drops into something, but you want to keep everything in the same color family or in the same style. Uh, so I think that's pretty important to learn yeah whatever prep you can do uh is is helpful um let's do it let's jump into a little bit about well let's see i'm gonna go a little bit more down the timeline and then we'll start getting into particulars so you were working at academy for a while i read in another interview that you did that uh and i'll put a link to that down below too so people could check it out uh but that you got your gig with elenium because Mm -hmm. just this guy you might have heard of seven lions recommended (laughs) you to him yeah Uh, is that can you can you tell us a little bit about how that happened and like why you think that happened? Uh, yeah, I think it was. So I did one show for Seven Lines. His VJ Ian was doing something else. And they brought me on for um, a show in Detroit. And this was the first time I ever had VJ like taken a flight and been like a tour VJ. Uh, so I was really excited. And that was in 2015. Um, but, you know, they already had Ian and had Ian working on on their show. And it, what, it wasn't until a year later that I got an email from Nick Miller, who is Elenium, that said he was talking to Jeff Seven Lines and he recommended me when he needed a VJ. And from there, it was just, yeah, meeting Nick and getting along with him. And it's, yeah, it was a great match. And I'm just so thankful that it worked out the way it did. I think the timing couldn't have been better. Uh, so what... Man, that's incredible. So that that was your first kind of touring show with an artist and you mm-hmm. just crushed it so hard that uh, yeah. they... But a year note. later, yeah, he still wow. remembered me. And that's amazing. Yeah, it's, yeah. it All really, right. really is a cool story. What, uh, could you think of anything that you might have been doing on that show that really helped you to stand out and be remembered a year later? Well, I tried to build a show that um, that told that was more cinematic, kind of told a story just because I knew that's that was his brand already. So I just tried to fit my content in with that. And um, yeah, and I think that 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 skill was needed when I started working with Elenium to, you know, have a similarity in, you know, VJing for melodic dubstep where it could either be so soft and so beautiful or super heavy and gritty. Yeah. They do have a a similar kind of style of show where it's, uh, yeah, it can be like very cinematic almost Mm -hmm. uh, these incredible moments with really beautiful content that you let breathe and then they just fucking slam it on you. Mm -hmm. (laughs) 
that's a, that's really cool. Um, how did you how did you prep for that first seven lion show show? Okay, yeah, just whenever I get a set, I just have to listen to it a thousand times over and over and over, and then yeah, just take take what I have and and build it. Try to make it unique with a different view, but um, yeah. Were you uh, were you like watching previous sets? Uh, did you get mm -hmm. a bunch of content for it at the time? Like, well, I don't know what his show is like at the time. Yeah, he he gave me a few things, um, but no, I didn't watch any sets. Um, yeah, it was just kind of like build out my vi my vision of it, and Very cool. yeah, but then still kind of fit into the brand. Or you know his style. Awesome. Yeah. Um, can you describe a little bit some of the some of the differences between how you approach like uh, a club set versus um, like a touring set with somebody right. who show you like mm -hmm. really know and are planning out. Okay. Yeah. That's what I was starting to say before it cut it. Um, so yeah, with the club set, you never know what's going to happen. So you just have to use, you know, jump around a lot in your decks, but for a tour show, when I have the set ahead of time, I build a whole timeline so that I know exactly what I'm going to do next. And I don't really have to think about it and everything's lined up. And that's why things can be so tight on a tour set or like when you're working with an artist, because you had you did everything in advance at least if it's an artist who makes their set beforehand some artists just you know kind of wing it and then you just have to know the music but um yeah just i build out the timeline and that really helps or there'll be like sections that i memorize but awesome yeah. i don't think i could do a club show right now i would be <laughs> so out of my element it would be so <laughs> difficult <laughs> Yeah, they are they are kind of two different beasts, really, uh, mm -hmm. and two completely different styles of playing. But um, I mean, yeah, really, the, the things that you can do with a you know really planned out set with an artist that you've been working on and talking mm -hmm. with for a, such a long time, especially I'm sure after years, um, you know, your that like mind reading ability is just strengthened. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, can you tell us a little bit about the the early days of that relationship and how it's evolved over the years? Um, mm -hmm. You told us kind of the the origin story of it that you were mm -hmm. recommended, and, and so yeah. Then what happened? <laughs> um, so that was in his the second part of his Ashes tour. Ashes was his first album, um, and I did maybe like five or six shows. Um, and everything was still, I mean, they're also in a completely different space, you know, just being a smaller artist, but, um, I think they liked my work. And again, I was just easy to be around friendly, easy to work with, um, and just kept bringing me back for the shows, even for shows when we were playing at 4 PM, you know, in the bright daylight, they still brought me and, I just, yeah, became part of the team, started to create this show. Um, in the beginning, I kind of, he kind of, he gave me a lot of ideas of what he likes, the styles, and then just through hanging out and watching movies or something, I just kind of learned his style and like what he likes. And I think now I've got it down pretty well. I know if he's going to like something or if it's going to fit in the brand. Um, and yeah, I think... Yeah, he gives me a lot of creative freedom still, though. So I'm so grateful for that. I love being able to come up with new ideas. Yeah, that's awesome when you can really get to uh, get to learn somebody's style and mm -hmm. they start to trust you with things like that. Um, and so uh, over that period of time, you started getting more involved with the content creating content mm -hmm. for the show mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. and just executing your own ideas about what the show should be. Mm -hmm. um, I read in another 
another piece. I think it was on the Resolute site uh, mm-hmm. where you were talking about how some of that show is run. And I'm not sure when exactly that came out. So that this might mm-hmm. be outdated information. Mm-hmm. But you said that there are, even within the, uh, the Elenium show, there are kind of two types of shows that you guys do. Mm-hmm. Uh, there's like a DJ set show that's a bit more improvised and you're kind of mm-hmm. punting it and kind of like following along doing, you know, whatever. And then there's also a more like playback controlled Ableton controlled. I don't know mm-hmm. if it's like full time code, but it's like MIDI mm-hmm. triggers at mm-hmm. least. Um, that's a bit more fleshed out. It's like, that's mm-hmm. like the show. Mm-hmm. Um, can you describe a little bit about like those two type of shows, if it's evolved further than that over the years, yeah. like what you guys are doing behind the scenes a little bit? Yeah, it's definitely evolved. The Breslum article came out with the Awake tour. So that was the second album. And then at that point we were using this custom MIDI system. It was like touch designer took the MIDI and then sent out OS from Ableton and then sent it to Resolume and uh, beyond for lasers and the Grand MA all through OSC, I think. I may have that wrong, but our programmer Hans, he came up with this whole system and we used that for a good while. It was a little finicky though. Um, so then by the time we did the Ascend show, which was last year, we switched to a full-time code um, where I had a Simpty box and um, ran through Simpty, which, um, became a lot more consistent. I did keep having this weird thing in Resolume though, where it would, if the file was too big, it would like stutter while it was playing. And we never really figured it out. I was on Resolume 6 at the time. Um, If it was a frame rate issue or what. So I'd be interested now to do another time code show um, with six or seven and see if, yeah, it's a little bit better. Resolute team, uh, other VJs, <laughs> put in the comments below what the fuck's going on. Uh, help us out. We're gonna fix the show. We're, we're find the bug. Yeah, we'll we'll see when we <laughs> start working again. You know, the new tour, new shows coming up. But also about those tours, I uh, the more recently I took on kind of a bigger role as show designer, working closer with uh, our laser designer and, and the lighting director, and you know with pyro and just kind of making sure everything's flowing and the animator whenever we have you know a custom animator um and just laying it all out that's really what i've been having a lot of fun with is laying it all out and making you know these sequences where every production element has their own time to shine and that's not just all video 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 and yeah just we have a laser moment or we have pyro so. Yeah, that's awesome. Uh, what can you go into a bit more detail about like what your process is for that? Uh, what what your kind of what your approach or your philosophy is to creating a really awesome show? Well, the first thing I start with is to listen to the music a thousand times. Just <laughs> listen to it. And so I can learn every sound and every beat and I can visualize that and come up with ideas um and then i just put it into a spreadsheet and i just time mark it all out and i just close my eyes and i can just see like the lasers or if it's a lighting moment or if video should be on and it's just i just developed it i think from watching the show so many times that i can literally close my eyes to new new music and just see what's happening and then i make it a spreadsheet and then i give it to the laser designer and say make green light, something cool, green lasers on this part or lighting, let's do, you know, slow gobos in this color. So I just love doing it and I have so much fun. <laughs> That's awesome. Uh, so you talked a bit uh, when you're describing the system about a couple of different uh, like programs and, um, and protocols and things that were involved. Uh, what sort of what sort of tools and programs and software are you using these days? Um, to program a show or to design it, I use uh, Google Sheets and Premiere. So I just use Google Sheets as kind of like a visual writing where I can just see what everything's doing. And then Premiere, I can 
see exactly what how long a song is or I can stop it and play it halfway through and make a marker exactly where I want it. Um, and then eventually load up all the videos in there and then see a whole timeline of it. Premiere has just been, is just the greatest in that. I'd love to have something that's not Adobe because, you know, <laughs> I mean, After Effects is a piece of crap. <laughs> <laughs> I know. Oh man. I was just talking to a friend about that. He's like, it's like, why am I paying 50 bucks for this shit? It sucks. I know. What, like, After what else can you use? I don't know. After effects exactly. is like the one thing that sucks the worst, but there's no good alternative for. I, I know. It. Oh. <laughs> but premiere, I don't have too many qualms with premiere, but just that to link it with After Effects. Oh, God, it's just, it's just, I can't, I don't have a good workflow for it. Yeah. But, um, what, uh, what about for uh, content creation? What, to, what types of things are you using on that side? I, I mostly use Cinema 4D if I'm going to make something custom. It just, it fits in well with Elenium style. Um, a couple years before I started with Elenium, I was really into 2D drawing frame by frame. Um, and you know, I was just had this block against 3d because, or even after effects where it just, you know, it interpolates the time in between where I was like, it just makes more sense for me to just look at the frames and just draw out exactly what I want, but it's just time consuming and the style, you know, it's a very specific style, um, that didn't really fit with the linear. So I kind of, you know, let go of, of that, um, creative that interest um and switch more to 3d um but i mean there's a lot of cool stuff that blends 2d and 3d now that i've seen recently and so it's exciting to see what's going to come next and just new ways of incorporating the two styles yeah definitely there's a lot of interesting things going on i've seen some cool uh like almost fully 2d shows out there as well as kind of a, a response to the octaneization of mm -hmm. the EDM scene. But <laughs> yeah, uh, so totally. it's interesting to see where things go. Um, are there any other uh, pieces of software or, or things that you're using in your shows or to create your shows? Um, not too much. I mean, obviously Resolo, Resolution Premiere and Cinema 4D are probably like the backbone um, of what I use. But again, we have specific animators who create things. Um, and so they may have other workflows, but yeah, that's really all I do. Awesome. And are you, uh, are you working directly with some of those animators or is that uh, handled by somebody else on the team? Uh, it's mostly me I'm, as much as that animator wants to work. Um, but that's just for tour visuals. The music videos are a different beast, you know, that's attached to the label and they have their own creative team. But as far as the tour content goes, I try to be as involved as the animator uh, wants. But I think what we we started working on the new show already and I'm really, really excited for it. I think... I think it's going to be even better than our last show. So I'm stoked. <laughs> Are there any, uh, any exciting things you can share with us that you're excited about, or is it all uh, just get some tickets and find out? <laughs> We're going to try really hard to make it flow. So everything is just one scene just flows into another. I think right now I have like, I just kind of like fill in stuff, you know, where it works but this one, we're just really trying to make it flow. Um, yeah, I'm working with, um, his name is Kyle at Simeon. Simeon, they have a studio in LA. So really excited about the new show. The ideas we've come up with are going to be pretty cool. Hell yeah. Yeah, may, make it even more cinematic and mm -hmm. cohesive. That's, mm -hmm. uh, hell yeah. Can't wait mm -hmm. to see it. Um, All right. Let's see. Okay. So the, another, another big piece in this uh, timeline is 
the the 20 years that were 2020 this was a, a weird oh. ass year and yeah. uh i think it impacted everybody in this industry yeah. pretty significantly um and we all kind of had to figure our shit out um i'm curious for you as somebody who was you know so closely tied to a touring artist um what was that what was that like for you in you know march 2020 when all the shows kind of went away where were you guys at as a production uh yeah. how did you respond to it what did mm-hmm. you what did you do in those first few months mm-hmm. and then uh you know I mean, what did you do to get through the year how have you yeah. been staying busy and getting through the day I think when 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 March hit, it was kind of a sigh of relief just because we had been going so hard. And I from July of 2019 till February of 2020, I had gone so many places, even besides Elenium, I had an extra trip to Saudi Arabia with Vina Modis to do a show up there. So I just when I got that break, it was really nice, but it only lasted about two months. And then I was like, okay, what is my purpose? I think that's what I had the hardest time with is that it just felt like I didn't have a purpose anymore. You know, Nick was still working on his, on the starting the new album. So there wasn't really much that I could start doing. And I just, uh, I just, so many days just wake up like, why am I here? Like, what am I doing with my life? And then, you know, like if shows never come back, why, you know, what is, it was really, it was really weird to think about, you know, a world with no shows and where do I fit in if, you know, there's no more concerts. But I mean, I did a few things like I worked the election um, in November. So that was nice to be part of a group again and to have a purpose. <gasps> Um, and then we, um, started getting things moving in this past February. Um, so since then I've been slowly ramping up. So it's, it's been nice, but I mean, I live in San Diego, so I can't really complain too much. I have the beach right there. Did went surfing a lot, (laughs) went swimming a lot, tanning a lot. So, um, you know, it was, it was, it was a nice break, but yeah, I'm so happy and excited to have things back. Yeah, oh for sure. Uh, that that's a huge thing. Like, you know, this these experiences and these shows are kind of our like our energy source and our mm-hmm. our purpose in the world. And yeah. uh, when that all just vanishes overnight, it's like it yeah. really hits you. Um, that's good that you could find some. Uh, you know, San Diego is a great place to relax and get some vitamin D and uh, feel good about yourself a little bit. (laughs) It was, it was nice to take some break away from the screen. I mean, I think the whole, I don't think I looked at a computer the whole summer. So just like get out of, you know, that mindset and just, yeah. That's awesome. Did you, uh, is there anything else that you like learned during that period of time? Um, uh, not too much. I mean, I definitely think that if <laughs> if I had to do it again, I I hope I would spend more time in Cinema 4D and maybe like X Particles or something or ZBrush and and learn those skills. But um, yeah, hopefully there's another one. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> just kidding. No, please no. <laughs> oh man, yeah, right. It's like man. Now yeah. that the time is going away. I'm like, shoot, I exactly. wish I had a little more. This has kind of been nice. Exactly. It's such a weird place, but I'm just grateful for, you know, everything in my life. So I, yeah, can't say too much. Yeah. Yeah. It was, it was nice to uh, get a little bit of a break. If you mm-hmm. could find a way to do that. Let's hop into a, a bit of a rapid fire round and see where that gets us. Um, All right. Rapid fire. It's not no stress. Uh, What is your, you may have mentioned this already. What is your render engine of choice? Octane. Octane. Everybody loves octane. What do you, what do you love about octane? 
Uh, I just like it now because I know it. <laughs> I just know it really well. So I don't want to learn anything new because it's going to take too long. <laughs> I feel that. Well, why did you choose it in the first place? Uh, I think well, one of my friends recommended it to me. And at that point, Redshift, I think, was too com- was a lot more difficult than it is now. It wasn't built into Cinema 4D. Um, so, yeah, that was, I think, the easiest jump into render engines at the time. Hell, yeah. Hell, yeah. There's a reason most people use it. Uh, yeah. Do you have a favorite, uh, like, plug-in or little secret weapon tool that you use? Um, I love, I love X particles. I wish I spent more time using it, but I, the stuff that people can create with it, it's so amazing. I am not that good at it, but I just, it amazes me. Yeah. It's pretty powerful. Um, yeah. Doing a project right now that I'm trying to really dig into it and it's like, mm-hmm. I'm having some fun. Yeah. Um, what uh, in Resolume? What is your, do you have a favorite effect or generator or Um, anything like that? Probably my favorite effect is you rotate. (laughs) You rotate. Uh, And that's just because in the club, you know, like at Create, I just had to be on it with my colors. Like he would just flip through the colors and it was just like, so I just had my knob and just like, okay, now this one's red. Okay, now this one's green. Like whatever the clip was, just fucking rotate it. (laughs) Yeah, it is a, that is a workhorse. That is definitely mm-hmm. probably one of the most useful ones. But yeah, shout out Heat Rotate. Doesn't get a lot of love, but everybody's using it. It's but essential. also, you know, more recently, um, Slice Transform. Slice Transform. I, I, I love input maps. I, I learned how to map really well by uh, when Joris came out with Chaser, the Chaser plugin. And that just like, I like watched one of his tutorials and read all the instructions and I was like, this makes so much sense. Why doesn't everybody map like this? So yeah, I, I love slice transform building input maps. I think it makes life so much easier. Hell yeah. Praise be the input map. Mm -hmm. Uh, Hell yeah. Uh, Related to that. uh, Do you have any, any like resources or places that you have learned some of these like VJ skills that you have uh, or content creation skills? Where do you, where do you learn this stuff nowadays? Um, I, mean, I feel like YouTube, whenever I'm trying to learn how something specific, I just watch you as much YouTube videos as I can about that topic. You know, if it's like fire, how to build fire or, you know, next particles or turbulence, like YouTube, I think is the best, absolute best. Yep. Just have some like 14 year old Russian kid teach you how to do it (laughs) over the internet. (laughs) Uh, Let's see back to rapid fire. Oh, I going through the process of trying to do some research for this. I noticed that you use, you have used a, bunch of different controllers over the years oh yeah uh yeah. oh i have one over here what is your uh your go-to these days or your favorite this this one was my first one i started with elenium the eight livid alias eight Ooh. they don't make it anymore i just so my and i think i love this controller but the buttons are so hard i i hate the buttons but for me controller is I have my opacity effects, um, like select the layers, um, kill it, master. That's all I need, honestly. Since all of my stuff is pre-programmed and all of most of the effects takes place um, in the development of creating the content, I don't really add that much VJ effects. Um, So I just need opacity, you know, some buttons and like a knob and I'm good. Now I've been using, I use, as far, because I have to travel so much and my backpack gets so heavy, um, I use the numpad, the keypad on, on my computer as buttons. And then I have a MIDI twister um, for my opacities. So yeah, smaller, better, um, 
but yeah, I keep it pretty simple now. But I used to, I love the Ohm RGB and the Livin made the DS1. That's one of my favorite controllers. It's in Denver right now. I need to get it back. Um, but yes, I have used a lot of controllers. <laughs> yeah. Oh man, the Livin DS1. I have one. Yeah. I've got one of those back there. Oh. I haven't used it in a little while, but yeah. Uh, if it wasn't so big, I would take it everywhere, but it doesn't fit in my backpack. <laughs> yeah, that one, that one has so many knobs. It's like all yeah. knobs. Yeah. <laughs> it's all knobs, two rows of buttons, and then the faders. It's yeah. oh, such a great controller. So you are, yeah, pro faders and knobs. Mm -hmm. That's your style. Hell yeah. Uh, what are you, what are you using? You, uh, you said you're using keypad and the twister. Yep. Twister. Yeah. Twister mm -hmm. is also a cool one because it's, mm -hmm knobs that are also buttons yeah yeah Actually, yeah i have my so my um my master opacity and then the pushing button is to kill it so i can go like spade out and then just turn off all those clips at the you know all with one hand i love doing that <laughs> hell yeah oh man we uh we might have to do another segment sometime just nerding out on uh oh, controllers. On controllers yeah that'd be sick um sweet let's let's continue do you have a a visual artist or multiple that you are stoked on these days it could be any medium um you know i i've been watching a lot of movies um who yeah, a lot of the animation movies, like we just watched um, all the Clone Wars and then Avatar The Last Airbender. So I just, I try not to look too much at other EDM stuff because I don't want to get stuck in a box. And I just try to feed my brain with as much random visual, you know, visual content that I can. Um, oh, but you know what? I watched other. It was on Netflix. Um, it was the one with the world is ending and the family. I don't know what it's called. Um, it's an animation and they just blend 2D and 3D. So awesome. It's like a family and then the, the robots are taking over the world. Ugh. Sounds I sick. I don't know what that. it is. I, so it's I'm on, sorry. It's I can't on Netflix. Help you out, it, it just <laughs> came out on Netflix and. Uh, I can't believe I don't know what it's called. We'll cut it in. We'll figure it out. Uh, yeah. Hell yeah. I mean, that sounds cool. So a lot of a lot of animation. Yeah. Content. I like movies. Yeah. Nice. What about on the music side? Music. I listen to a lot of different music, um, but I mean, I guess recently my favorite band it has been Parcells. Uh, there's a really awesome video on YouTube of they like play an hour set in the Hansa studio and they they just have such a cool style and I just just really great transitions and uh, yeah just love and also um, I really loved um, After Hours by The Weeknd the whole album last year like Blinding Lights that was my song of 2020 oh my gosh whenever I hear that song I just go crazy. <laughs> Oh yeah. Yeah, it's got that sick like synth wave vibe to it. Oh, I just love it. Um hell yeah. Let's see. Do let's see. Is there before we go into uh some parting words for the internet, is is there anything that we haven't talked about that you would like to talk about? Um, the new, the next show. So our next show is on July 3rd um, at the brand new Vegas uh, Raiders stadium, Allegiant, Allegiant stadium or something like that. I think it may be the first concert they've ever done there. Maybe the first time they've had an audience. Um, and it's a four hour set. Uh, each album, Ashes Awake Ascend, um, and I just kind of finished programming everything and it's just, it's, I think it's just going to be a great show, especially if you like Elenium to just see everything all at once. And I'm so excited for it. Oh yeah. yeah. Hell yeah.
definitely check that out. I'll make sure this is out before then. Uh, and all right. I suppose a final thing. What uh, if there was one thing that you could tell to somebody who is trying to get into this or maybe in it and trying to be successful in it? Um, what's like that one important thing they should think about or that piece of advice you would give them? Um, it's to just start. I think that it's so easy to get caught up in, oh, I need to learn this software first and then I need to wait till I can afford this one thing and to do that or, you know, and I do it all the time too. Like, and, and just like make all these plans of how I'm going to learn everything in order to become the best animator. And I just think that that takes away so much time that you could actually be using to learn how to animate by just trying and just open up the software and just make something. Honestly, like if you just open the software and use a little bit every day, like you don't have to do people status to make this whole big thing, but just get in there every day and try to do something like in two months and three months, you're going to be so like so much more improved. You're going to improve so much more. Um, so yeah, just start, just stop trying to plan it. Start. <laughs> Great piece of advice right there. Um, and I suppose lastly, where can people find your work or uh, get in touch with you? Uh, probably Instagram is probably the easiest. Um, I, I don't really respond right away, but I always, if someone asks a question, I always try to get them an answer. Um, but yeah, probably is. And then any Illenium show, go to Illenium show and I'm, I'm there somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> Hell yeah. Awesome. Well, thank you so much for doing this. Uh, it was great having you. Yeah. Thank you so much for having me.